Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for another opportunity to preview our lesson from the Directorate of Christian Education, the Redeemed Christian Church of God. We are excited. I'm excited uh, to come to you through this medium today. And I know that God will bless you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Our blessed Redeemer, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor for all you have done, for all you are doing, for what you will yet do. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, as we go in this study, we pray that you touch our lives, you will minister to us, and you will bless us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, today we are looking at lesson 24. Lesson 24. And the topic is the fruit of of the Holy Spirit part 2 the fruits of the Holy Spirit part 2 remember last uh, section we had uh, the part 1 of this topic and we were told or we studied why fruits why are we talking about fruits when we are talking about humans and then we also consider the opposite of not bearing fruits, the opposite of not bearing the fruit of the Spirit. And today, we are going on in that lesson. So let's take our opening prayer quickly. Please bow your head with me and say, Father, help me to understand how to bear the fruits of righteousness. Father, help me to understand how to bear the fruit of righteousness. And as we have declared, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Bible passage for this lesson is from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. I read, This I say then, walk in the spirits. I want you to take note of that. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the spirit. Now take note of this again. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Yet Apostle Paul was admonishing the Galatians on how to overcome sin and the law. On how to overcome sin and the law. And in verse 16, he says, Walk in the Spirit. Now, the question is, How do I walk in the Spirit? Is there a location? Is there a place that is called the place of the Spirit? And then I begin to move my legs from uh, uh, taking one step to another. Is that what he's saying? No. In verse 18, he made it clearer. He said, Be ye led of the Spirit. That is, obey the Spirit. Live by the, uh, uh, live, live by the dictate of the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit be your God. Let the Holy Spirit direct all your actions. If we as Christians can allow the Holy Spirit to take charge of the whole of our life, you will see that we cannot go against the law. And the flesh cannot have power over us. I pray that God will give us more understanding in Jesus' name. Our memory verse is from James chapter 3, verse 18. James chapter 3. Verse 18, it says, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The fruit of righteousness is sown in, is sown in peace of them that make peace. Now, what does this tell us? It tells us, number one, that 
When we talk about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, another word for it is what? The fruit of righteousness. When you have in you the fruit of the Holy Spirit, then you have the fruit of righteousness. Because all the constituents of that fruit leads you on the path of righteousness. Leads you on the path of obedience to God. Leads you on the path of perfectness with God. So, he's saying that those who exhibit peace, those who have the peace that passes human understanding in them, and makes, you know, propels that peace, puts that peace forward in all their dealings, as far as relationship with man is concerned, they bear in, them, in themselves the fruits of righteousness. By way of introduction, the life of a Christian is a constant battle between our sinful nature and our new nature in Christ. In our text, Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, talked about how the flesh war against the spirit, how the flesh tries every now and then to subdue the spirit, to quench the spirit, to silence the spirit. So there's an ongoing battle. There's a constant uh, 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 rift between the spirit and the flesh. Unfortunately, just because we have accepted Christ does not mean we are automatically immune to sinful te temptations. Does not mean that the flesh cannot raise his ugly head and then propel us or try to force us to do its biddings. But we must be ready to allow the Holy Spirit to take charge to help us to overcome the temptations of the flesh. Now, sometimes it may feel like we are trapped in a desire to reach for the sinful thing rather than the godly thing. Apostle Paul said, The things I, I, I want to do in Romans chapter 7, he says, Those are the things I find difficult, the good things I want to do. I find it difficult to do them. But the good things, I should be doing that I desire to do those are the things I struggle with maybe this is your story also but at the end of that place he said thank God for Jesus so you have Jesus you have the Holy Spirit to help you to help me to overcome the temptations of sin now this does not always have to be the case the struggling the strife does not always have to be when we overcome the flesh by the help of the Holy Spirit. And of course, we can overcome the flesh. The aim of this lesson is to study how to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. How do we bear it? Having considered why we talk about fruit and the opposite of producing fruit. Now, why? How can we bear this fruit? And the method to use in this teaching is the lecture method. Now let's go to the first outline. It says, choose to bear the fruit. Choose to bear the fruit. That is a choice. Now that we are in Christ as believers, we have the power to conquer the sinful desires of the flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So, as long as we are in Christ, we have the power to conquer sinful desires of the flesh. When this flesh raises up its head, we say, keep quiet by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Now, the very presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts means we can now choose godliness over sinfulness. We now have the power we now have the grace, we have the courage, we have the boldness, we have the strength to say no to sin. To say, I, I refuse to fall into temptations. I choose to live godly. I choose righteousness. I choose holiness. I choose, you know, victory over sin. We have that power with the help and presence of the Holy Spirit in our heart. Now, we must understand that the choice of this decision is 100% ours. 
I've had so many believers, so many Christians says, ah, eh, 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 the, eh, the, 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 you cannot, you cannot say no to sin. That when the devil comes and you fall into it, it is because eh, the devil forces you. That is not correct. That is not correct. We have the power to say no. And the choice to say no, the choice to choose to do the right thing, is 100% us as, as believers. Because we have the Holy Spirit who will be witnessing, who will be speaking from the inner heart to say, my son, my daughter, that is a sin. Don't do it. So we can say, I am not going to do it. We are no longer a slave to our sinful nature. According to Romans chapter 6, verse 14, it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. So the grace of God upon our life is not for us to keep committing sin, but it's for us to say no to sin, to exercise dominion over sin. We can choose love over hate. We can choose patience over hostile frustrations. We can choose to remain faithful in the face of disloyalty. We can choose to exercise self-control over lustful desires. And these are some of the, the, the few things, the many things, some of the many things we can choose to do right. This is the beauty of having the Holy Spirit. If, if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the power. That is what we are saying. The power to say no to sin. Because he gave us the power to fight. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So he has given you that power. That power is working inside of you. That power is available for you to tap. That power is available for you to exercise. Whether in willingness, in willing, or in action, in desire and in action. So that the name of the Lord can be glorified. Now, all we must do to tap into that power is to practice obedience to God's word. To exercise that power is to say, I choose to obey God. What is God saying in this situation? Now, if you have any situation and the devil is saying, do this, you ask yourself, what is God telling me to do? Or what does the word of God say concerning this situation? What will I do and will bring glory to God? In uh, John chapter 15 verse 4, John 15 verse 4, it says, Ye are my friends. That's Jesus talking there. It says, Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you. So, if you want to exercise the power over sin, the power over sin, then you must be ready to do what Christ commands, what the Bible has instructed us to do. Now, how can we go into the uh, second lesson outline? Second lesson outline. It says, work at it. That is, you have a role to play. You have an assignment. You have a task. Don't just fold your hands and say, ah. they say when we have the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will be the one speaking. The Holy Spirit will be the one defending us. The Holy Spirit will be the one acting on our behalf. No. The Holy Spirit will only speak. Your own is to act. Some Christians have asked if it is possible to produce all the components of the fruit of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This seems like a whole lot of work to be done. But do you know that God will not give us a load that we cannot bear? Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 to 30. Matthew 11, 29 to 30. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He says, for my yoke is what? Is, is light, is simple. And my body is, is, is light. He said, the yoke of bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit is not just possible for us as believers, but it is mandatory. It is, it is mandatory. It is important. It is a must for us that we bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So, you need to believe that you can do it. 
you need to believe that you can bear the fruit. You need to believe that you you can manifest all the the the, 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 the results of the, I mean the constituents of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You can manifest all, not just one, not just two, but you can have all within you. He says in Matthew chapter five verse forty eight, "Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect." So God expects nothing less than perfection. Perfection by manifesting all the constituent of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, however, since the enemies of our salvation, which is the devil and the flesh, will not give up easily on us, we are bound to face the temptation of yielding to sin occasionally. It is not out of place. Of course, that is not the desire of God. But sometimes, maybe by error, by error, a believer may find himself yielding to sin. Now, if that occurs, it is important that a, such a believer retrace his step back immediately. But for us not to fall at all, for us not to yield at all to sin, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, and that must be our, our guideline, our watchword. It says, be sober, be vigilant. So we must remain sober, we must remain vigilant because we have an adversary, the enemy of our salvation, that is the devil and the flesh. Now, we must continue to work at attaining perfection. We must continue to work at attaining perfection, growing daily, growing daily, surrendering totally to the dictate of the Holy Spirit and resisting the devil. James chapter 4 verse 7 says resist the devil and he will flee from you. We must continue to resist with our strength, with everything we have got, with our voice. Don't keep quiet when the devil is trying, is pressurizing you to sin. Don't be silent. Don't stay in that situation and say, oh, I have the Holy Spirit. I can bear it. I can enjoy it. No. The Bible says flee. Make no provision for the flesh. According to Romans chapter 13, verse 14, to fulfill its lust thereof. Now, work also at bearing all the components of the fruit and believe it is possible. Believe it is possible that you can do it. And as you keep working on it, as you keep believing, you will see the possibility manifesting in your life. Now, it must be a daily step by step work. To nurture our relationship with Jesus so that we can grow to look more like him in his manner, in his attitude, and in action. That people will see you and say, this is a Christian. This is a child of God. This is a child of God. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Now let's go to our class activity and we come to the end of the lesson. Class activity one says, the class should discuss the thin line between our emotions and exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. What is that difference? What is that thin line between our emotions and exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit? Or when we exhibit the fruit of the Spirit, or when, when we are loving, or when we are peace, is it an emotional uh, uh, character? or the fruit of the Holy Spirit. How do we differentiate between uh, emotions and exhibiting the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Number two, class should mention other practical steps a believer can take to produce all the fruits of the Spirit. What are those things we need to do as Christians, as believers, to be able to do or to produce all the fruits we are talking about, the, the constituent of the fruit of the Holy Spirit? What can we do? Please throw this question in the class and uh, get feedback from the student. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will enlighten us himself in the name of Jesus. And in summary, every believer must choose to bear the fruit of the Spirit and work at attaining perfection. Remember, it is a choice. You either choose to bear it or choose not to bear it. And you can work at attaining perfection. In conclusion, though we may struggle and fail because we are still humans, 
because we are still human but we will surely conquer the flesh and bear the fruit of the holy spirit we have to daily strive work for and yearn for the holy spirit to produce this fruit in us so even when we struggle and fail as long as we remain connected to the holy spirit as long as we remain submitted to him it will help us and before we know it we will discover that these fruits are manifesting in our life that will be our testimony in the name of jesus closing prayer please bow your head with me and say father please give me the grace to produce all the components of the fruit of the holy spirit please give me the grace to produce all the components of the fruit of the holy spirit in jesus name for as many of us that have prayed this prayer sincerely i pray that the holy spirit will help us indeed in the name of jesus thank you father for prayers answer in jesus mighty name we pray amen god bless you have a wonderful weekend